Hello and welcome to the Friday, January 6, 2023 edition of the Sands and the Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Brad Duncan is at it again and this time with some malware that arrived or were deleted to the malware arrived in an email written in Portuguese and uh, targeting Brazil. What was a little bit unusual was the use of auto IT. Auto IT is a simple, basic, like scripting language that allows you to automate uh, Windows tasks, including interacting with the GUI. It works all the way back to Windows XP and creates these standalone executables, uh, which of course are very attractive to attackers in order to automate tasks like downloading additional uh, malware and executing it. The trick with auto IT is that, of course, it's a legitimate tool, so it's usually not detected by uh, anti-malware, but its use in malware, like the one that Brad observed, sometimes leads to it uh, annoyingly being detected uh, by anti-malware. What's the real problem here is not auto IT, it's the scripts written with it, with it but of course, uh, anti-malware doesn't always make that distinction. Needless to say, with uh, difficulties detecting it and the the underlying tool being not malicious, this is a rather attractive way for uh, attackers to create a simple a little uh, malware executables. For more details, including packet captures, samples, and all the indicators of compromise that you would ever want, well, uh, check out uh, Brad's uh, diary. Well, usually I don't talk much about breaches, but today we have actually a couple that are sort of actionable, so that's why I want to mention them. Uh, the first one, and probably the more severe one here, is that uh, a breach at Circle CI. Now, Circle CI, uh, the CI stands for Continuous Integration, a company that helps you sort of automate uh, testing, building uh, software. They were breached, and with that, it's possible that some secrets that you stored with Circle CI in order to connect to systems like, let's say, a GitHub and the like, uh, got uh, breached. Also, SH keys, for example, dimension and other API tokens and such could be uh, leaked as part of that breach. And they recommend that you will rotate them. Luckily, these are typically not credentials that a user needs to remember anything like this. So uh, rotating them is typically a little bit more straightforward. But of course, particular SSH keys and such, you may have used the same SSH key in different systems, then you have to swap them all out. The second breach is a little bit more difficult sort of to uh, get a handle on how severe it is. And that's a leak of user account information for Twitter. No passwords were leaked, no password hashes. But what was leaked was essentially a list of Twitter handles and the associated email addresses. Of course, the email addresses could then de-anonymize certain Twitter handles and that information could be used for additional attacks, blackmail, and the like. Uh, the data has been published on a forum and uh, is free to download now. And finally, the breach that I would consider least actionable was a leak of source code from Slack over the holidays. I believe on December 28th, someone did gain access to private GitHub repositories here. Not very actionable. The reason I mention it is there are some interesting feature here with this uh, breach that Slack apparently uh, goes through quite a bit of hoops to not make that information public. They posted on their site, they didn't link from its uh, news uh, indexes, they uh, marked it as not to be indexed uh, by Google. So now you know it, uh, yes, uh, Slack's uh, private GitHub code repositories were leaked over the holidays. In vulnerabilities today, we uh, first of all have uh, authentication bypass vulnerability in control or web panel. Uh, patches uh, should be available, but there is also a working exploit available and uh, 
easily found on GitHub. The exploit is relatively straightforward. Uh, so if you're exposing control web panel, expect attacks now and definitely patch before the weekend. And then we have more advanced hackers piggybagging on existing exploit groups. Uh, Torla apparently has taken over uh, domains or at least one domain associated with a threat actor that distributed infected USB keys. So what they essentially did is now uh, gain access uh, to uh, systems that were infected by this original malware and they're now planning their own uh, payloads uh, on those systems. Interesting approach and uh, certainly not quite unexpected. Why do all the work yourself if you can just steal it from someone else well and that's it for today thanks again for listening and talk to you again on monday bye